hello everyone it is princess underscore mini four and welcome and welcome back to my channel today is december 3rd 2021 and today i'm going to be filming a story time i guess about when i first got my period and how my life has been since then to now so yeah and there is a reason why i'm filming this which i will get to in the middle so basically i got my period when i was age nine I know some people probably like that's really young well so did my grandma but my mom got her period when she was like 16 or 18 one of them so i was just an early developer and then actually to get into that when i was seven years old the doctors forced me to get an mri because they were like something's wrong with her she's developing too fast for her age fast forward they found nothing as why would they every person develops differently some kids can get their period probably as early as age six you know it just depends on genetics and a lot of stuff so yeah like i had i got like breast probably when i was like six years old and i got my period at nine so they were like that's strange blah, blah, blah. but it's like in reality it's just life and it's my life so yeah so basically i don't remember obviously a lot of stuff from that i'm 20 now but like what I do remember is when I was at school that day, like nine, I was in third grade. And actually, fun fact, my best friend at the time actually got her period when she was eight. So I wasn't the earliest. She had her period in second grade and I got mine in third grade. So I was at school and, you know, you use the bathroom. And when I was like using the bathroom, I saw my underwear and there was a whole bunch of like brown stuff on there, which obviously now we know that it's discharged, but I didn't know that at nine. So I didn't think nothing of it. I went to the bathroom, whatever, continued my day at school, came home, used the bathroom again, and there was more on there. So I just changed my underwear and went right outside. Like when I was a kid, I would come home, change out of my school uniforms, put some play clothes on and stay outside till six, come inside, do my homework. That was my life. So that's what I did. And then I had on like, I remember I had on like pink pants and I think white underwear. And I went outside, played a little bit, came back in, you know, did my homework, ate dinner, then went to bed. And actually, right when I was laying down, because what I did, I took my underwear off and put it in the laundry basket. So my aunt, because me and my aunt shared a room, so she saw and then she basically woke me up and she was like, I already knew about my period, by the way. I already knew about it because... I was like, I think my grandmother taught me, whoever taught me about it, I already knew about it. So she basically just gave me new underwear and put like a pad on it. And that, like, I don't remember a lot of it. Like I'm sure she probably explained to me what was happening. Cause it also leaked through to my pants as well. I didn't, so those pants I was wearing, I put them in dirty clothes. So all my stuff was basically in the dirty clothes, which is why my aunt saw it when I was laying in the bed. So I had to change those underwear again. And then like said, she put a pad on there and that was basically that. So basically fast forward to like age 11 because from 9 and 10 years old I had no cramps. Like my period was 7 days but I had no cramps. It lasted for 7 days and I had no cramps. And then when I was 11 years old, so I remember I was in 5th um, grade and I had moved to my dad so I was in a different school and stuff like that. And that's when I first started having period cramps and, and they were really bad. Like. So I don't remember right now, but I know, so there's fifth grade, I started having cramps for the first time, 11 years old. And then in sixth grade, basically my cramps were so bad that from sixth grade through seventh grade, every month, cause you get your period once a month, every month I missed two days of school for my period. And that's what I had to do every month. And I'm serious, like through sixth and seventh grade, I don't know how I passed because you know you can only have like a certain days to have off but every month i spent two days at home because of my period cramps they were that bad and i would get up in the morning basically tell my dad i'm not going to school because i don't feel good and i would literally lay in the bed all day because that's how bad my cramps were and then at eighth grade was when i was basically after going to my uh pediatrician about five times he finally referred me to a specialty gyn because you're not really supposed to go to a gyn until you're like 16 i think at least in my state so basically I had to go to especially GYN cause she basically specializes in younger kid problems, like GYN problems, especially since kids get younger and younger having their period and stuff and getting pregnant, you know, whatever. So she specializes in the younger kids. 
and that was when i first got on birth control i don't know the name of the pill but it was just a regular birth control pill you take it once a month you have the three weeks of like the birth control pill then the last week is a sugar pill which basically forces your period to come on um so basically how that went i like the birth control because you had your period once a month and my period was so structured that it would come on the same day of the like same week same day of that week the same time like around 6 30 p.m my period would come on and it's so funny how i think about it because i look back and every month it came on on like say like a thursday and it was always at 6 30 it was so strange but i loved it because i knew exactly when it was coming on i knew exactly how long it was going to last and at that time my period had went down to five days so it was amazing now to talk about like i still i never mentioned this before but like once i started having bad cramps i also started getting heavy flow and also my period was like irregular too when i was younger but i think that's normal because like my period was skipped like two months so that's normal when you're a kid so but yeah so on the birth control pills my cramps were a lot less but they probably were a lot less because of she also prescribed me naproxen which is a v what is it a leave the proxen is basically just a leave so that's what i ended up getting that as well and then i forget how long i was on birth control pills before i had to like switch a pill because it basically kind of revamped like my body got used to the birth control so i had to get on something else but basically once i got on birth control i was able to go to school like eighth grade was probably the full year that i went to school and didn't have to miss school all the time because of my period which was kind of nice because having to come back and make up two days of work every month is kind of crazy and i'm sure the students knew why i wasn't there how i was missing two days out of every month but that's just how bad my cramps were and stuff like that so yeah i guess we could say maybe ninth grade is when i had to get on a different pill and then basically 10th grade is when i completely stopped with the birth control pills and i wanted to try the um what is that called that goes in your arm hold on next pilon i just thought about it i tried the um next pilon in my arm and because i remember i was working at an amusement park i had it in and for i had it in for four months i know that's not that long but I, you get it in when you're on your period and i didn't really have much cramps but for four months i bled every day for four months like i had to wear a pad every day for four months that's crazy and that's not to mention a lot of money that's a lot of money because pads aren't cheap they're like ten dollars so that's a lot of money I have to wear a pad every day and I obviously change it so yeah we spent a lot of money during those four months so that's when i was just like i went back to her and i was like it's not working you know you said that i may bleed for a few days i have never stopped bleeding i started my period before i got it in and i basically had a four month long period like no and then she was like well you could always take a birth control pill with it to also help it and then i was like no just take it out like why am i doing all this extra stuff when it's supposed to go in and work by itself why would i put that in and take a birth control pill no so basically i took that out and then i think i guess i went on to a regular birth control pill the last birth control pill i was on which was this was up until my senior year of high school is called camrys and basically it's a three month long it's like you it's three months into one so you get one month but it's all just the birth control pills. So it's four weeks of birth control pills. Then the next month, four weeks of birth control pills. Then the third month is three weeks. And then you get a period at the end of the third three months. Which was amazing because she was like, well, we can't really find anything what to do about your cramps and your flow. But we can just kind of delay your period to have a period every three months instead of once a month. So that worked amazingly. And then my dad passed. I was under his insurance. He passed. And then that place no longer took me. We love being an American and insurance basically determining your fate of going to a doctor. So I wasn't able to do that. And then my insurance wouldn't cover my Camrys. So I couldn't take the birth control pills anymore. I was able to take them at first and then they stopped covering it. So I was not able to take that. And basically I went to the doctor and I said, I would like to discuss basically different types of birth control. So this is right around the time I started getting my weight loss surgery so now we're age 18 yeah 
right around the time I'm getting my weight loss surgery. So it's the year of 2020 and I went in there basically to discuss birth control and the lady never really discussed anything. She was just like, I remember I sent an email and I was like, I would like to talk about an IUD. It doesn't mean that I wanted to get one. I basically was just trying to ask her what's your opinion about having like a heavy flow and like the irregular period and really bad cramp cramping she just said i'll just give you a referral to get an iud in so whatever that happened like say you you're born i mean you're raised to like trust the doctors because they're supposed to know better for you but in the end i realized that they probably thought well they they thought that i was getting an iud in because of not trying to get pregnant which that was never i've never been on birth control to actually not get pregnant i've been on it for my period my entire life which is crazy but um well not my entire life but my entire purity life basically so august 11th 2020 i got an iud in by far the worst pain i've ever experienced in my entire life so actually it was so funny before i got in i had like an appointment in june and i didn't know in july and i don't think i didn't get a period so they were like, oh, you must be pregnant, blah, blah, blah. So then my period finally came on and then I made an appointment and they still forced me to take a pregnancy test, which is kind of crazy. Like I said, it's so crazy to people because like you tell them that you're not sexually active and they don't believe you. Why would I try to kill my baby by putting an IUD? And do I look like a baby killer? Like, so like little things that doctors do really irritate me is like, I have no problem being truthful. If I'm sexually active, I'll say that I'm sexually active. I have not been sexually active since February 8th of 2018. So if, I, if, if I'm pregnant somehow by then, that baby can come out walking and talking and, and cooking at this point. Like, no. But it's like, you know, doctors never believe you. So basically, yeah, I had to come in. I'm already bleeding a whole lot. And I had to come in and still take a pregnancy test. So whatever. I go into the room and you know you lay down on the thing have your legs up and then they put the uh what is that called a spectrum whatever thing in there and which is one way you can tell that i'm not sexually active because it hurts really bad if you've had a baby or are sexually active it wouldn't hurt that bad but anyway so they put that in there and then i don't really know how the process goes but i guess she said that she i guess they like put something up in there to like clean it and numb it at the same time the numbing really didn't work and then she went to put it in and when i tell you guys that was probably the worst thing i've ever felt in my entire life no it was the worst pain i've ever felt in my entire life i had surgery and then she put it in and then i guess she went back and adjusted it that right there was honestly like literally i was like it hurts like i screamed like that don't hurt whatever she did after she put it in like maybe she adjusted it that hurt really bad and like i said ever since then every every pain i have i compare it to that and i'm like i will probably give birth to kids one day and it probably won't hurt as bad as that so whatever so then i get up and i leave and basically she gives me like a pant flick so the one i ended up getting was called lyletta and it's a iud for six years so it'll be 2026 basically will be the day i get it removed so whatever you know i go home and then basically all that day i'm cramping and bleeding pretty heavy and basically for like the rest of the week i bled pretty heavy and had really bad cramps and basically that kind of lasted up until a little bit before my surgery and my cramps were really bad to have like to it for your information my cramps were worse when i got an iud like i've had really bad cramps my entire life if I was going to rate it out of 10, my cramps before an IUD were maybe like 6 out of 10. But my cramps on my IUD were like 20 out of 10. Like they were uh, um, horrible. And I went back to the doctor so many times complaining about the cramps and they haven't done anything about it. So basically, yeah. And then the first day, to talk about the first day, the strings were too long. So I'm already in pain and I'm cramping. And she already told me your cramps should be gone by the time you get home they're not gonna last that long and then i email her that day the doctor and i'm like i'm still having really bad cramps and now the string is too long and it's hanging it was literally hanging out of the hole and it was poking me so i'm like now i'm in pain two areas and then so i think a few days later i go and she cuts them and she already cut them while she was doing it so they had to be cut twice 
and then yeah so basically for like a few months i was in pain every single day and i had to change my pad like five times a day because i was bleeding so heavy and i basically had to take like ibuprofen 800 milligrams that's a big amount of ibuprofen i was like living on that which is not healthy it's not healthy to take ibuprofen every day consecutively like every i think they were only like 12 hours because they're so like they're so high of a dosage i don't care and they weren't even mine they were my uncles and the things because they were not trying to give me anything for my cramps so i said i'm gonna do anything i can to not be in pain and those 800 milligrams didn't even work so basically obviously i had to get weight loss surgery so i couldn't take ibuprofen no more you can't take NSAIDs while you're basically once you get weight loss surgery and for the rest of your life so there goes my kind of one thing that kind of relieved my pain so now i take tylenol and yeah that's all i can take so the good thing is that i think the cramps kind of subsided a little bit by the time i had my surgery but i was really worried about that more than i was worried about the cramps but yeah fast forward to now basically is i don't bleed as often anymore now it's kind of like a regular period so like every month so somewhat i'll go through a phase where i get really bad cramps every day and then i um basically bleed for like seven days it's really weird and it's not even every month because usually the first sign and this is for like a video for females usually my first sign that i'm going to start i guess the period on the iud is my nipples hurt really bad for like at least a week before it comes on and then i obviously have the cramping but this time it didn't come on i don't know it's not really doing what it's supposed to do but yeah so i um basically ended up changing gyns to go to my grandma's gyn because she was like she's really good and i feel like she'll listen to you so i went there and i basically told her i was like i like said my iud doesn't cramp as bad as before but i still have really bad cramps so like whenever i would get a cramp it is really bad like i remember like two months ago i had a really bad cramp that was in my uterus like which is to me is like under my stomach and then it was in my back and in my side all at the same time and that one cramp lasted for an hour when like i'm not even exaggerating that one cramp lasted for an hour i was like in the middle of a class i was in the worst pain ever and it's just like why is this iud doing this to me you know so like i complained to her she's like well you came in and said you were having worse cramps before you got the iud i said no i did not i came in and i told you my cramps have been worse on my since i got the iud they just haven't been as bad now because i've had it in for a year like august 11 2021 was been a year they they're not as bad as they were during the first few months but they're still bad when i have them when as before when i didn't have an iud in i would have a period once a month and have cramps during those five days now it's just whenever my iud decides well whenever my yeah i guess whenever it decides i'm gonna make me be in pain so then the next thing she said really pissed me off because again i go there and they ask are you sexually active and i say no so here's what she says well you can come in and get a culture to see if you have like chlamydia or something like that that could be causing the cramps and, and then I was like, no. I was like, first off, I said I'm not sexually active, so I wouldn't have chlamydia. And then I was like, I was like, no, I would like to come in to talk about getting it removed. Because now she just pissed me off. Don't like, the so doctors need to stop doing that. Stop. If, if you ask a patient and they say that they're not sexually active, the least you can do is believe them. That's the least you can do. Like I said, I mean, I'm sure people lie. That's on them. I don't like, why would I lie? You're the doctor and I'm not going to lie because I want to get accurate results. I've always been like real big on going to the doctors and trying to be healthy and stuff like that. I would never do that. And several times I've had to go get um, ultrasounds, but like inside to see if the IUD is in the right place and what's causing the cramps and it's in the right place. So they don't really know why I'm having really bad cramping on it. And as of lately, I haven't been having really bad cramping on it, but I'm still getting it removed because yeah so basically in three days december 6th i'm getting the iud removed and i kind of want to make a little series basically showing the process of getting it removed and 
basically getting my cycle back regular because like I said basically since I was in the eighth grade I've been on and off birth control since then I think the longest I wasn't on birth control was like four months ever since I was in the eighth grade so I've been on birth control for a long time and I was like one time I was thinking I was like I wonder if I can even have kids I've been on and off birth control on and off on and off probably messed up something down there which I know it probably didn't but no since I'm not sexually active, I don't have to worry about being on birth control. So I'm going to get the IUD removed then. I'm actually going to try to film there. I don't know how that's going to work. I'll probably just have like the phone up like this while she's doing it. Because I'm obviously not going to set up the camera. Because people in my state aren't really big. Like if you live in like areas where it's like movies and they're always filming. Then it's, like, it's okay to film at the doctor's. But where I live, it's not really like that. So I couldn't just like set my camera up. Because they'll probably be like, um, you can't do that. So I'm not even, I'll just have it like this. I kind of want to show my face. Because I really don't know how bad it's going to hurt. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I will be taking a Tylenol, two Tylenols before I go. I did that the last time too. And actually this, this live streamer I watched, she took an Xanax. Or whatever that pill is. Like this is one of those pills you're not really supposed to take. And when she got her IUD in and it still hurt. That just shows how bad the pain is. And they obviously say it hurts worse when you're not sexually active and you never had a kid because my cervix has never been open before. It was forcefully open to put the IUD in. So yeah, that's basically why I'm filming this. I kind of want to do like a part one basically to explain how my life has been on my period. Not the best. And all the, like I said, I have tried every remedy in the book. I've tried heat and pads. I've tried working out. I've tried yoga. I've tried hot tea. I've tried vitamins and herbals and everything and CBD. I've tried everything for my period cramps. Nothing helps it. You just got to take the pill, hope it works, or just deal with it. So I am going to basically go back to having a natural period, I guess. So basically, I'm going to film stuff like that. Like, I'm going to film my first period after my IUD and stuff like that. I think it will be interesting. I always try to film stuff that will maybe help somebody else. And yeah. So basically, that is the end of this video. It's probably a lot of rambling, but it's kind of hard to remember stuff from that long ago. Since I got my period so long ago. But yeah. In these last two years, 2020 and 2021, are like kind of combined in my head. Because at one point I was like, didn't Kobe die this year? But he died last year. It feels like whatever. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Can make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on notification bell to know when I post. And share this video with your friends. And look, look out for a new playlist about my IUD removal process. Bye guys.